Absolutely, and then um, I think um, your methods were so effective, and they also see saw it in Marquez's body that a lot were left to you know throw accusations, and I'm, I'm sure you've heard of it. So, um, what can you say about those people? You think boxing is just so stuck in the primitive ages that, like you said, some trainers even um, disallow weight training, and I've heard a lot of that talk because they say. You know, it would slow a fighter's movement, this and that, yada, yada, yada. So, what's that, What what what's so special about your training that helped Marquez, you know, perform the way he did, as opposed to the traditional boxing training? Okay, well, you know, to start off, uh, boxing, traditional boxing training, it involves running a lot, long distance, involves being in the weight room, doing abdominals, involves, you know, pretty much hitting the bags, whatever the training do, because that's not my area. Mm-hmm. But uh, with Homer and Marcus, the difference is, I, like I said, I designed a weightlifting program, mm-hmm. a nutritious program, a supplementation program, and everything was based on, on scientific planification, along with the training, uh, load age, or the training routines. So pretty much, my if you really take a, a boxer, and, or any human being, perhaps, and you you know, you make him uh, into a program of lifting weight and then feed him the body correctly, you're going to have a physical change. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with Marcus, uh, before the last fourth of Pacquiao, fourth fight, uh, me and Marcus, we had sat down and, and Nacho and everybody on the team, and we were trying to figure it out, okay, you know, after what, what happened on the third fight, which we thought we won, and, mm-hmm. you know, some judges felt they... Yeah, I saw you guys won that too. I went on the record saying yeah, you guys yeah. won that. Yeah, we won the fight, and, and, and I don't know if you noticed, but the training for the fight, Marcus looked fit. It mm-hmm. was very explosive, very fast. But then on the fourth fight, it was a totally different training. Uh, not mm. different in the way that, you know, just different kind of percentages, different methods. Of, for example, in this kind of particular fight, we implemented more punching power because we needed uh, to KO him. Mm-hmm. We didn't win by KO. We didn't want to go to decision again because, you know, it wouldn't make sense to go to decision because, you know, obviously Juan, Nacho, and everybody here, even myself, that maybe the decision would be given, you know, would, would be given to Pacquiao again. Yeah. So we didn't want to take chances. So we trained for more than almost 40 and a half months for the fight, which went very uh, hard. I don't, know, I don't know if you saw some of the HBO 24-7 episodes. That's just part of what we do. Mm-hmm. That's even nothing. I mean, I wish you could have been there. Mm-hmm. Perhaps one day in training, you would have seen what we do. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. You have to be very, uh, very disciplined guy to be able to sustain that kind of level of training. Mm-hmm. You know, get up in the morning, be on the track at five o'clock in the morning in the weight room. Do your lifting routines, do your medicine ball routines. Everything has to be planified correctly. Mm-hmm. You cannot just choose one thing and decide to do it today and not do it tomorrow. You have to be, it has to be specifically fit into the stages of the planification to the, to the periodication fight. You know, so, yeah. but we did a great, great, great training for that, for that matter. So, you know, there's always, obviously, everybody has a right to, to opinion. You know, no one can, that's what, well, this is America. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a right to have an opinion. But I think that also people that have been involved in, in science for years, people that currently no physiology, you know, you can see those changes. I mean, I don't want to sound uh, one of our fingers to no one, but, but you cannot be a fashion boxer and still expect to have a hell of a performance versus a guy who is not only now doing weightlifting, but also doing planification, different bases of training that would not be found back in the days. So, you know, I mean, nowadays, I, I don't know if you notice, a lot of boxers, 
and Pacquiao was one of the first ones that actually started doing this with Alex Ariza. Of course, I heard Pacquiao does not lift much of the weight, mm-hmm. but uh, that's just an example, but he was doing a lot of medicine balls, he was doing a lot of plyometrics, a lot of things that a lot of boxers were not doing. So, I mean, it's just, it's just like everything else. Science evolved, you got you got evolved with it. You cannot stay behind and keep doing something you did in the 60s when you're ready in the 2000 years, 13, which obviously science has evolved, scientifically has evolved, uh, uh, supplementation has evolved, nutrition has evolved, new studies have come up of science, but you know, we have to, we have to evolve with it. We cannot just uh, stay in the past. You just can't. I think that if you really know what you're doing, you just really have to stay with science and advance with it. Absolutely, absolutely, man. And, um, Talking about Marquez, so we so he has a fight with uh, Timothy Bradley in the winter. Are you? Uh, I mean, in the fall. Are you? Are you going to be with Marquez again for that uh, training camp? Yeah, definitely. Yes, uh, we uh, have been talking to Marquez in the last two weeks now, and uh, you know we have been waiting on the uh, date, the precise date, because uh, I think everything is to stop until Floyd decides to if he decides to fight on. September, and I think Marcus fight will be moved in October. That's mm. what it, that's what I've been told. Mm-hmm. So if that happens, uh, I can start early. I have to, like I said, I have to start precisely, know the exact day, so I'll be able to train and correctly be able to do the planification uh, that way it's supposed to be done for the particular fight. Because you know, uh, once again, Bradley's a very uh, super fight. He's very fast fight guy, just like Pacquiao. Pop, 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 he's always on top of you. Mm-hmm. So we have to have a good preparation for that. So yeah, I've been talking to him. We have been uh, uh, touching bases. So we we looking at to start probably in July or maybe the uh, maybe the first uh, the first probably the last week of June. Depending, like I said, all depends on the date mm-hmm. on the date of the fight. Yeah. Sounds good for you. What's the perfect time frame of a training camp? How many months do you need for well, your? For example, it's once you know everything. Everything has a. Uh, Variation because, for example, I've been, you know, I've been called, for example, recently, I was called, uh, I was called for the, uh, Juan Manuel Lopez called me and he asked me if I wanted to come out of Puerto Rico and train him mm-hmm. for the fight against Nicky Garcia. Mm-hmm. But, you know, at the time I was with Jim Pascal and mm-hmm. counting the days, it would, it would only have been four weeks for the training and, you know, for my training into the date of the fight. So I felt that it was very short time for me to act on it. Besides, you know, I had a lot of work, a lot of, uh, I was working with Pascal, two other mm-hmm. boxers, but I really just couldn't get away. But, you know, once again, for example, with Marcus and Pacquiao, the days are always, you know, by the time they were established with, you know, with uh, uh, long t- long periods of time ahead of the, of the deadline. So, you know, we were able to plan it, for example, four months, three months, but my training usually is between 10 to 14 weeks, mm-hmm. like my proper program. You know, but then once again, you can always train people who who's had eight weeks, maybe has six weeks. Then you have to do different training, uh, straight. It's called straight to competition training. So it it depends. Once again, it's not always it's not always what 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 I want. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's just that people call you up and they say, you know what, I got to fight and I have to fight. I have to make the weight. And you know, I got six weeks. Can you train me? And you know, sometimes I take the job. Like uh, Brandon, I took the job last night, and it was only. We had only eight weeks, so we did what we could, and he did pretty good. I mean, to my, you know, to my, that's my opinion. He did pretty good. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, once again, I would, I would have loved it. We could have gone twelve to sixteen weeks. You know. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Brandon, I was talking to Brandon uh, a few days ago. He told me that um, he was interested in working with you again, but you guys haven't. Um, finalize any contracts yet or whatnot. So, what's the status in that? Is are you trying to work with Brandon again for his fight against Pacquiao? Yeah. Doing, my job, my job, doing, doing, my job, my job, doing, my job, my job, doing, doing, my job.